video, we're talking about how to use the distributive property with algebra. So our learning today is I can simplify expressions using the distributive property. Please write down what you know. So yesterday we learned in our last video, we learned about what the distributive property is. So you can write what you learned in that video. Write down what date you're watching this. And we have one vocabulary word, which is simplify or to make less complicated. Please pause the video, write all this down and restart when you're ready. So in our last video, we talked about the distributive property and used it with numbers. And we realized that the distributive property with numbers doesn't make a ton of sense. It seems like a silly thing to use. So today we're gonna learn about why it is really, really powerful thing. And we're going to use the distributive property a lot on problems where the directions say to simplify. So let's say we had a problem that said to simplify for parenthesis x plus seven. Remember that we always have an invisible multiplication symbol that is there when we have a number just next to a parenthesis. So I have four parentheses x plus seven and parentheses. In this case, if I was gonna use the distributive property, that means I'm going to distribute the four to the x and I'm going to distribute the four to the seven. Now my trouble comes from the fact that this x is a variable. We don't know what that value is. That x is there because we don't know the number. It could be any number. So if we want to simplify this, we want to make it less complicated by getting rid of the parentheses. So using the parentheses or using the distributive property, I'm gonna do four times x and then I'll do four times seven, just like we did with our work yesterday. And then we just bring the plus sign down. Well, four times x, if I was gonna simplify this more, I can't do anything with four times x because I don't know what x is. So that's just four x and I just get rid of that dot because four times x and four x are the same thing. We can just turn that dot invisible. I can do four times seven, four times seven is 28. And then I still have that addition. Now at this point, I can't add four x and 28 together because I don't know what x is. I can't just put it random. So at this point, we're done. We have simplified this. We got rid of the parentheses. And my answer, not a number, it is an expression. And that's really, really important. Anytime that your answers, your problems directions say to simplify, we're going to get an answer that is an expression. And there's a lot of ways that this could look. So we'll do a couple more examples so I can show you some of these things that will happen. But the really important thing to remember is that our answer here, when we're simplifying, we're not finding a, a number, we're not finding an answer, we're just simplifying, we're making it less simple. And so the actual answer to the question we're being asked is an expression, not a solution, not a number. So another thing that could happen is we could have subtraction. So it could be three times parenthesis y minus five and parenthesis. Okay, again, just like before, we'll distribute the three to the y. We'll distribute the three to the five. We have three times y and three times five time, it's a subtraction symbol that goes in between. The last step we can do is three times y, we can rewrite as three y, and three times five, we can solve and get 15. And then our subtraction sign goes there. And now we have our answer. For my next example, it's going to be a little more complicated. This two is outside the parentheses and inside I have three y plus five. So at this point, see if you can pause the video, solve the problem, and then restart when you have an answer to check your work. To solve this, or I would distribute the two to the three y, distribute the two to the five. 
So now I have two times three y. I have two times five and I have a plus sign in the middle. Well, two times three y. I don't know what y is, but I can do two times three. Two times three is six y. Two times five is 10. I can't add six y with 10. So now my answer. The last one I wanna show you, again, I'll write it down, then pause the video. See if you can solve it. And we start. This one is four, and then in parentheses, two m plus n. So hopefully you tried this on your own. If I was going to solve this, the four to the two m, and I would distribute the four to the n. So to four times two m plus four times n. Well, four times two m, eight m. 4 times n, we don't know what n is, so that'll just be 4n. And then we have a plus sign. And again, I don't know what m is, and I don't know what n is. So I can't add this stuff together. So this is my answer. So that's how to use the distributive property with algebra. We'll be doing that more throughout the rest of this unit, and it's using it in harder and harder problems. Please make sure that you understand all this. Rewatch any parts of the video you need. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.